and once again it's saturday and uh, i'm here to answer all your questions i'm getting a lot of your questions my colleague rachel has uh, uh, collected your questions over the past few days and shared some notable ones which is also a reflection of uh, I'm getting a lot of queries about uh, all the things which we have not been able to effectively answer for uh, all that you get on value research online or our services so demanding explanation about uh, using our rating using our services how exactly to go about using it what does it mean uh, so <clears throat> let me start with uh, the notable ones. Uh, what is the difference between the five star rated fund and the recommended fund that Value Research will be providing? Okay, you are asking about the premium account uh, uh, that will be made available to Value Research at Value Research Online. Yes, you will be able to subscribe to it. Uh, <clears throat> we have been providing, you know, five star rating or the rating of mutual fund in India. Uh, we started it in 1993. It's a mechanical quantitative process. And uh, every month we revise this rating. Uh, the foundation of this rating is classifying the mutual fund. Now, SEBI, SEBI, few months back, SEBI came up with the classification system. But before that, value research was the de facto classification that uh, we went about classifying. So when in 1993, our classification system was very different. Uh, it was different because uh, we did not have open-end funds. We classified funds based on their objective. We classified uh, funds based on their design. So there were funds which were closed-end funds listed on the exchange. There were funds which were, uh, yeah, of course, there were, uh, they were all closed-end funds. Uh, there were closed-end funds where the fund company itself used to provide. So it was a one-way uh, open-end fund in a way. That fund companies used to launch their closed-end fund. And uh, they used to offer their <clears throat> a periodic re redemption by way of repurchase. So that was uh, so classification system evolved, and we started our rating the rating of Indian mutual funds from that time onward, 1993, and it used to get published in Business Today, and then internet happened, and we started publishing it on our website, and many people started uh, using our website, uh, our rating in the newspapers. So notable among them was you know the Economic Times or the various other newspapers are still carrying it. Today, all the fintech companies are subscribed to or they are licensing our uh, ratings uh, <clears throat> to, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a reference to, uh, as, a, as a composite measure of uh, performance. Uh, so, our rating is a, is a quantitative uh, method. It rates funds uh, within their category and it rates funds only of, of a category where there, is a, there, there are at least 10 funds uh, with a minimum history of three years. A fund is not rated till it is three year old, and uh, so so that is it. Uh, <clears throat> so it's a mechanical process, and it gets revised and updated every month. Uh, now there are many many categories which are useless, uh, and they are also, they, they, those funds are also getting rated rated. Are the the fund that you will get in the value search premium account will be uh, one step ahead of the best fund that you see you know uh, annual thing which we publish or uh, the best fund list that we get, that you come across in the anniversary issue, which is the October issue of uh, Mutual Fund Insight for the last 18 years. Uh, so uh, it is a curated list of funds, but you get little more than that. Uh, it's not, yeah, you know, these were actually one-off thing. You know, we were, we were coming out with our best fund listing in the month of January. The best fund listing was, uh, uh, you know, will be reviewed in the month of October, published in the, uh, in the anniversary issue. Now we will be, and it is a much shorter list. It is a list of funds which we want you to build your portfolio. It's a great selection of funds where it goes beyond the just the quantitative thing. Our analysts sit together, debate about the funds, talk to the fund manager, validate our thoughts, and try and anticipate what could be a problem. Are we getting a reasonable explanation for the problem that the fund will, you know, is the fund manager acting in a manner which is me measured? which is understandable to the investors and uh, we will be keeping an eye on those funds very closely we will be talking to the fund manager every six months to you know three to six months time scale to keep track of things we will also be keeping an eye on you know newer opportunity new kind of funds uh, which which may not be there there are categories for which you know we have no rating for example one of you have asked this question that uh, somebody wants to invest in an international fund and we don't rate them Yes, because international funds are not of similar kind. 
we don't have 10 similar kind of international funds so they, they are not getting rated and they will not be rated but uh, that doesn't mean that they are not investable options uh, yes there are great international funds which you should be uh, investing so that curated list of funds will actually uh, be kept track of and uh, we will be keeping you updated not only that when a fund turns bad when a fund turns, turns you know behaving in a manner which was not anticipated we try to get stock of it take a stock of it and then take a call that is it no longer a hold is it no longer a worth buying should you get rid of that fund uh, from here on uh, is it not passing all the all the checklist uh, if there is a change in fund manager and uh, the successor fund manager if we, th we think is uh, we, we are unsure of uh, we will put that fund on hold uh, we would like you to stop your investment in those funds till we, we will till we are able to regain confidence in you know uh, continued performance or enhanced performance uh, of the fund so uh, that is how this list will be it will be a much smaller list of appropriate fund of a suitable category of suitable category it will be it will eliminate a lot of fund which might get rated but it, it is not worth investing so that is what it will be uh, this question came from uh, Mithun Kumar. Arjun Mittal is asking that I usually use value research ratings to help me invest, um, help me in my investment choice. At the moment, I'm looking at diversi to diversify my portfolio by investing in international funds. However, these funds do not have any ratings. Why is this? Which international fund would you recommend? So I just answered this that till a fund category. And a fund category is made up of funds of homoge you know, homogeneous kind. They must be all alike in a, in a broad range. So we do not have 10, 10 similar kind of international fund. Every fund is of a different kind. So, uh, you know, there are thematic fund, there are geographic focused fund. Uh, so, <clears throat> and this is where that premium service or, you know, value search uh, best funds, uh, which uh, we publish every January. And here we, uh, you would have noted that in our analyst choice, uh, the selection of funds, we have some international fund which is recommended and it is worth investing. Uh, the prominent one which I can remember is uh, the NASDAQ 100 uh, ETF or the fund of fund which is mounted on that or uh, uh, another fund. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm unable to get hold of that long list here. Mm. Okay. Uh, yes, so one fund is that uh, Motila Lothwal NASDAQ 100 fund of fund and the other one which is convenient and the Franklin India f um, feeder, Franklin US Opportunity Fund. So these are two, two funds worth investing and of course the case is pretty simple uh, for these funds. One is that they have a compelling history. Uh, Indian rupee has depreciated over a very long period and I think that trend is likely to continue till we have these differential interest rates. So you will have four five percent of uh, gain because our, our rupee goes at today's price, and when you get back get your money back five years down the line, rupee would have depreciated. So we, you will get more even if the fund does nothing. Uh, then the third thing is that you know these are very high quality technology portfolio, and all your and it's a very meaningful diversification. The kind of companies which you are able to uh, get exposure to through these investment is uh, uh, you don't have in India. You have you don't have such companies. Uh, so take a look at these portfolios, make a choice, they, they are worthwhile, credible investment. Uh, Nita Patel is asking that I want to invest in stocks. Uh, if I subscribe to value such a stock advisor, how many of my, how much of my long-term portfolio should I put in stock? Can this be a substitute to investing in mutual funds? Uh, not necessarily, it, de it entirely depends and it entirely depends on your, how much time do you have? Uh, are you a long-term investor? Of course, you are a long-term investor. Uh, do you have the temperament? And do you have the ability and willingness to uh, learn about these companies? Because, uh, you know, the stock advisor service uh, can help you in a limited way. Uh, it is, uh, and in a limited way and in a meaningful way, that uh, stock advisor service will give you a list of companies, will give you uh, all, the, all the kind of uh, information will give you, uh, our analysts keep track of the companies that we recommend, about 40 companies that we have recommended so far. 
uh, any big move that happens you know big moves are uh, you know in most in most long term investors they panic when the stock prices fall dramatically even of a great company and uh, also the other side is also true of course right now not too many people will actually recall those instances that when a when a goods company's stock price goes up dramatically uh, we tend to think that okay this is good enough this is fine uh, i'll cite you some example uh, hdfc bank's ipo happened in 1992 and uh, the stock price went up from 20 to 40 40 to 80 and 80 to 160 in a matter of couple few years and when at 160 from 20 it looked like good enough uh, but then it just kept on going up uh, so a lot of investors also exit a stock also sell their stock if the price goes up dramatically and uh, also when it comes down you know hdfc bank's stock which has given a return of near close to 20 percent of course now, right now it might look a little lower i don't know the precise thing but i think it's close to 20 percent 20 percent annualized return adjusted for dividend and uh, when you look at you know even such such a stock with, uh, with such a such a complete uh, you know such a compelling performance even on uh, even at the bank or the, the best managed bank or the most profitable bank or the most rewarding bank for shareholders uh, this stock has also come down by 50 percent on five six instances so if an investor would have bought this stock with a great belief and faced with a 50 percent decline in value right now about from its peak it is down about 30 percent so the, the, there are stocks you know which can actually go up and down and it can drive out investors a uh, stock advisor gives you an opportunity to look at those stocks gives you an update to actually start developing a belief so i would say that don't just subscribe to stock advisor read everything that you see there try and build your belief make a selection of the 40 stocks that you have we have also done a bit of our selection in terms of best buys now list so we have 40 recommendations but we have shortlisted you know about 15 of them which if you have to buy some stocks today or the set of stocks today it should be from this list or this list itself but then comes you know building a temperament reading it understanding it developing a belief and holding it for the long term if you can do all this by all means go for stock advisor uh, but uh, think of it in terms of a five year uh, five to ten year investment time frame and uh, look at it as an as an input as an aid to your learning and learning which will be which will prove to be very rewarding a learning which will you know which will also give you i think it will be a, it, it's a great thing to have a, a great equity portfolio which will be rewarding and uh, with the with the bonus that you will learn you will have a belief and uh, you will actually have the joy of doing it yourself <clears throat> so go ahead do it if you have uh, these uh, if if you aspire for these variables and i think uh, most thoughtful, well-read uh, investors uh, should aspire for this. Uh, but if you don't have the time, if you don't have that inclination, if you are not a, genuinely a long-term investor with, with a with a mindset to learn about things, learn about companies, and if you don't enjoy it, uh, don't do it. Mutual fund will get you a good part of all the benefits of investing in equity without uh, without getting through all this hassle. Uh, now, Mohammed is asking that what strategy do you follow in picking stocks to recommend on stock advisor? Would you say it is more growth or value oriented? In fact, uh, when we were launching, you know, our, our preparation for launching the stock advisor service, it took nearly two years uh, because every time we were getting ready to launch, uh, we will get into a rethinking mode and go about modifying the scope of our service. Uh, we also looked at our competing services, the kind of stock advisory services available in India and abroad. And we realized that, you know, uh, stock advisory services were offered in very complex ways. We wanted to simplify it. Stock advisor service is just one recommendation service which has, which has it all. It has growth companies. It has value-oriented companies. It has small companies. It has mid-sized companies. It has large companies. And uh, because when we looked at competing services, there were services which were focused on mid caps, small caps, value oriented, growth oriented. We thought that, you know, there are good companies which are available in di from different dimension at different times and uh, investors need to diversify. So in our stock advisor service, 
uh, but I would say that you know we still are growth investors. We are inclined more towards growth simply because we have we think that uh, 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 val pure value stocks uh, that whatever has come in our uh, ambit or we have gone about analyzing uh, they don't really fit the bill. It can you know the problem of the value value opportunity that we came across looks like they might turn out to be there's a reasonable chance that they will turn out to be a value trap or we or our, our investors or our customers may not have the patience for that so it might be useful you know some such some such opportunity might be useful so i would say that you know there are two dimensions to the recommendation that we offer and that, that we make one is that they are generally growth oriented companies which are reasonably priced uh, we have we have a watch list of, of about 20 companies uh, which uh, we want to recommend they are great companies they're great growth growth companies but they have never come under the price range of our recommendation so that is why you would have witnessed that in the month of march uh, when we came up with this best buy list uh, we were hurriedly able to you know recommend a few stocks so this service is pretty straightforward it is it is a service which offers all kind of stocks we are generally a growth tilted investors of stocks which are reasonably priced it can and we, our recommendation can be a very small company can be a very large company right now there are a large number of you know there are quite a few large companies when we launched the service the market was at a level where that we were unable to you know and and there was frenzy in the small cap universe so we were able to keep away from that so there are different kind of stocks which are good for at different times and we wanted it to be a simple service which is understood easy to follow uh, for all investors so and we we want to uh, you know and i think we will continue to remain like that only uh, it will be a sim simple service which will have all kind of stocks and the best buy uh, stocks will reflect what we like most right now or looks like you know what are the most attractive stocks right now uh, anirudh das gupta is asking that i am an equity investor i am mostly invested in multi multi cap funds now I want to invest in good mid cap for 12 years. Could you please suggest me one or two good mid cap funds? Yes, I'll give you the list from the our best fund selection. But mind you, this is my this is my revenue stream. I urge you to buy best guide, the best mutual fund guide, so that we can continue uh, serving you the way we are. Uh, our selection of mid cap includes Axis Mid Cap, Franklin India Prima Fund, and uh, Kotak Emerging Equity Fund. Uh, these are our three, uh, and uh, Mirai Asset Emerging Blue Chip. Uh, no, that is uh, that is a um, large and mid cap fund. No, so these are the three recommended mid cap funds for now. And uh, in our premium service, we will be keeping a track on these these funds, how they are doing, any notable update. If there is any time when you need to sell these funds, or they are no longer that attractive as they used to be. Or something else has, is more attractive, and these are not as attractive they used to be on a relative basis. We'll be keeping an eye on that, and that is what the value search premium service will do. Uh, another thing which I'm just I'm a little tempted because you know last two weeks I've been involved in development of the of this particular tool for the new value research online premium service, uh, which is the portfolio builder tool. Uh, I, you know, a lot of investors come and ask me that, uh, give me a good portfolio of funds for me. And that was the starting point for this portfolio builder tool. And I never had a straight jacket answer for them because uh, for any answer, I need a couple of, uh, I, for, to give an honest answer, I need to understand two, three things. One is that what is your investment time frame? Uh, how experienced are you? Because uh, when it comes to investments, uh, you'd never learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, all the mistakes that I have learned, that's a lesson for me. If I tell you any kind of story, you will not understand that you have to lose your own money and I don't want you to lose your money. So you need, I want your experience to be relatively measured and calibrated so that uh, you, do, you are not driven out of the market. So uh, you start, so, so my answer to different people with different experience, different scale of investment and different time period could be very different. And that is why we have created this portfolio builder tool. So it will actually, it will ask you two, three questions and it will give you a list of a, a, a set of funds, which will be most appropriate for you. Also, it will factor in the amount of investment that you are, that you plan to make. 
not only that it it can also take into account your existing portfolio if you have investment in one or two funds it can suggest you that should you be investing more in those funds or if it is part of our curated list or if it is a decent fund but it may not be part of our curated list so i am quite looking forward to a um, lot of investors benefiting from this you know portfolio builder tool so uh, start using it the moment you uh, it's made available uh jayant rathi is asking that can i invest a lump sum in this volatility which funds are preferable large small mid or multi cap which is better for long term for 5 years please name the best funds uh jayant i always urge yeah even when it comes to investing in stocks once you have made a list of stocks to invest in put your price range and never invest at one go and uh, more so in times like this because i won't be surprised if everything that we are looking at today will be down 20% and i won't be surprised if it actually goes up by 20% so how to deal with this uh, it will be a missed opportunity if things go down uh, by 20% and it will be a missed opportunity if you don't invest lump sum so spread your investment and that is why you should always spread your investments when investing in equity more so if you have large sum of money because the regret of you know investing a large sum of money and losing it in a brief period of time even though you are investing for the long run it is very it is very uh, it hurts and uh, to overcome that hurt and to overcome and you know it hurts to an extent that uh, many a times we act in a huff we act in a panic we try to take our, all our money out and all our losses become permanent and forever and not only that it deprives you of this beautiful mechanism of being able to become an equity owner for the long run it deprives you of this beautiful avenue which uh, which gives an opportunity for every citizen who has some savings to invest and aspire to be wealthy you know in, in their relative world so uh, so i think you know never invest lump sum keep it simple so invest in a multi cap because it will have all of it and uh, good multi cap funds to invest i am listing you all these funds but i would like you people to buy my books that is how we make money and uh, the best multi cap funds by our selection is aditya birla sun life equity fund axis focus 25 franklin india focused equity fund uh, invesco india contra fund which is a value oriented multi cap fund by our yards by our measurement and cotex standard multi cap fund and mirai asset emerging blue chip fund uh, no that is a large and mid cap fund but yes you can say that it's multi cap minus small cap so uh, yes take my list up to lnt india value fund lk saini is asking that uh, is it a good strategy to invest in foreign equity through etf mutual funds available with indian fund houses yes absolutely our jobs are here our investments are here our house is here so you know a small part of our money or a reasonable part of our money should not be here uh, that will be a very meaningful diversification that apart uh, you know the kind of uh, the investment avenues particularly the us domiciled you know the us opportunity fund or the nasdaq 100 it is making you available a set of companies which is otherwise not you know here in india our best companies are you know technology companies are tcs infosys wipro or hcl technology or whatever they are service companies uh, they they do they, they are scalable business they are, they are scaled up business but they are not product companies you know when you uh, microsoft makes you know i am using a windows machine and then i am using the whole office suite which uh, i've been using all these years 30 years of running value research and we owe our business to using microsoft because uh, we use the access database we use the sql server and we every year we pay the license fee while i was a student we used to use uh, we we are we are used to using all the pirated ones or whatever was available in the college lab and maybe they were cheap uh, things then and uh, but uh, for last 30 years we have been paying the license fee for all this and that's revenue stream without the incremental cost so when when we look at all those businesses the scale up global business, global technology businesses i think they are outstanding businesses they are also available reasonably cheap 
and it it we are using those services we are used to these companies we are you know we are we are more familiar with many of those companies <coughs> than many companies that you will find in fund portfolios which you may not be aware of so in that sense you understand that and they are they are solid company they are scalable company they are not fragile companies and uh, they don't they also don't have the kind of problem these companies many of these companies don't even borrow money <clears throat> so by all means add such funds to your portfolio it's a very meaningful and important diversification in fact any investor who have would have had a third of their money in such funds they would have seen far greater resilience in their uh, general equity fund performance and even in the worst of times they were not a laggard uh, Dawson Fernandez is asking that I want to start investing in equity. I would like to build a corpus of seven to ten lakh by investing in stocks that will help me achieve important goals in the next three to five years. What do you recommend? Uh, I don't have any recommendation for you, Dawson, and uh, don't be in a hurry to make money. Uh, seven to ten lakh, because seven to ten lakh, uh, how much money you are going to put in? Uh, it's a function of that. In next two three years, and uh, three to five years is not a good time frame. I've seen you know three year periods where market has not gone anywhere, even a great portfolio because great don't because for person like you who is going to invest for three to five years, I would say that the maximum risk that you should take is by investing in an equity savings fund. A third of the money is into fixed is into equity, two third of the money is into is into. Uh, uh, but it will also save you from okay. uh, now let me reveal you some secret value research stock advisory service is definitely not 3 year old we started in uh, october 2017 so in october 2020 we will be completing 3 years when we are recommending and that doesn't mean that we are not calculating performance we are calculating performance we have the performance in fact uh, if you subscribe to the service, you will see the date of recommendation, the price of recommendation. And if you feed that particular portfolio uh, into, uh, uh, into our uh, portfolio tracker, you will get a return. I'll tell you what our return is. If you would have invested uh, a sum of rupees, you know, any amount of rupee uh, money into yeah, each stock, uh, on the same day, a constant amount, say 10,000 rupees, and you would have got all the dividends in between. So in these, uh, and you would have sold all the stocks that we have recommended sell on that specific date. You know, the performance of our portfolio, and we look at it very closely. We look at our performance very closely. Uh, the, we are not guided by it as much, uh, in a sense that the short-term performance of uh, all the stocks that we have recommended so far, uh, there are... Uh, let me just give you, you know, some example that uh, there are stocks, uh, two stocks, which are up over 100%. Uh, one stock, which is up about 99.2% since the recommendation. Uh, three stock, uh, two stocks, uh, no, one, two, three, four. Four stocks which are re re returning ranging between 50 and 40 percent, 40 to 50 percent. Uh, there are two stocks which are returning between uh, 30 and 40 percent. And we have, let me tell you about the losers. Uh, we have made two, three recommendation and uh, we have a sell recommendation. One of our sell recommendation by the time we sold it, it was down 70 percent. Uh, three of our uh, recommendations are down 60%, 60 to 70%. So it's a mixed bag. And as a result of all this, it turns out to be a return of minus 1.6%. Minus 1.6% as compared to something like uh, minus 4.5% on Sensex. So that is, that's a comparison. So, but we, I still urge you that don't, don't look at these returns. I think three-year return in the life of a service like this a long-term service and that is why we are not revealing it to you uh, because if uh, and i would like you not to subscribe to this service if you are coming for the short term uh, if you are looking for a tip service this is not a tip service this is a service which will give you a list of stocks 
we we focus very uh, you know we work very hard to make the whole investment hypothesis. Uh, the investment thesis you should read, understand, buy into the story, and that is when you will have the conviction. Because many of these stocks that we have recommended and they are down 50 percent, they will make a comeback. That is what our belief is. Uh, and if you can't stick through this decline of 50 percent, uh, then there is, this service will not you will not get, derive the full benefit of this service. Likewise, there are stocks where where it might look very attractive that this stock has gone up by 100%, why not sell? I think, you know, we have, we have taken a 10-year view that these, these stocks can actually be substantially larger businesses in the next five years or 10 years. And that is why selling a stock at a 100% gain might be very disappointing, m might be a huge missed opportunity. And uh, that is what I was explaining you at the outset on, in the context of the first question, that unless, until, because most investors miss out on on the on the opportunity by either selling on selling in a panic of a great stock which has gone down dramatically uh, selling a stock which has gone up dramatically and uh, sticking to your to a company uh, where the story has changed but we are we are still you know there could be stock which might be might might, might have you know might still be going up there have been instances where the stock price is going up and we have recommended sell because the basic premise on which we made that recommendation that underwent a change. And uh, the factor that we take into account, you know, one is that uh, we have all our fund analysts, uh, so all our stock analysts who make their recommendation are there at any given point, they are looking at many companies worth recommending besides keeping an eye on all the companies that they have already recommended. Uh, I personally vet all the companies. I look at, you know, I look at their uh, recommendation, but before they have done that, they made the recommendation. We have an internal private checklist of non-negotiables, uh, a company which where we find some of those symptoms, we never touch them. And uh, there have been one or two instances where we have violated such those principles ourselves, made those recommendations, and we have got it on our chin. Uh, we got a big slap on our chin, and uh, that is a big lesson of not violating our own non-negotiables uh, ever in future. And uh, <clears throat> and we have made those sell recommendations and uh, some of them will be making. But uh, uh, the point is that, you know, we are bringing a combination of process, imagination, and uh, the imagination is, and besides that, we share you a list of, you know, we are, we are very averse to risk in terms of, uh, we will, with our open eyes, we will never touch a company which has a questionable corporate governance background uh, of some kind or the other uh, because uh, you know at, at the heart of a great business which has to be which should be you know which one should buy for the long term you need a person with unquestionable integrity who will not shortchange the uh, the minority shareholders because this is this is a great uh, uh, trusteeship this is the agency risk we entrust our money to an owner and I want him to, you know, I want uh, that owner to take ourselves. When we are recommending companies, we are not recommending a stock as a ticker. We are not recommending it. We want, we think like owners uh, of those companies. And we would like that owner who is actually running that company, whether that be a management, whether that be a professional management or a promoter, he should treat me equally or uh, almost equally, if not completely equally. And uh, in that sense, you know, we bring in a lot of process in this whole framework. We share with you a list of a risk meter. We try and answer 30 questions, which is made available to you. Uh, all the big moves and a big move is a very mechanical process. We have designed a process that, you know, 5% movement in a day or something like that. We will sh I'll share with you the precise mechanics, mechanics of that. For plus minus 5%, plus minus 10% in a week or plus minus 20% in a month, those big moves in our, uh, reporting gets triggered in. So an analyst is forced to go about questioning that this is something that has happened in the stock. Do, should we worry? Is there anything to worry? And in many occasions, on, on most occasions so far, there has nothing been to, you know, there not much been there, there to worry. But it is definitely a prompt because you will worry if a stock goes down by 20%, you will worry and it's our job to 
keep you posted. So look at Value Research Stock Advisor as a set of thoughtful helpers to help you build a great long-term portfolio. We will do all the hard work. We will use all our imagination. We will bring in all the process and you make a great portfolio. We want you to succeed and keep us keep paying for our services over many years. Evaluating the performance, maybe I can give you a three month return, seven, six month return. Maybe we should create a fact sheet for you. Uh, but I think three years in the life of this fund, it is a little premature. But uh, given that so many investors ask this question, uh, we thought that uh, we will try and drive hammer this thinking in your mind that look beyond three years, look beyond short term performance, great and three year, um, three year, two year, uh, one year performance may not mean anything. And we would like you to align with us uh, with that orientation. So that is it. I've given a too long an explanation, explaining, giving you the answer, uh, revealing the numbers. Uh, but also why you should not attach great uh, and also I'll tell you uh, before this whole crisis the return on our portfolio was looking very handsome it was looking you know something like 14% uh, annualized return uh, based on all the investment that we have made periodically uh, when the service was about two and a half year old so we'll share all these things with you in a fact sheet on completion of our third anniversary on of, our, of three years and uh, but still, I would like you to, that that will be your starting point. And all our subscribers have access to complete recommendation and the date of recommendation and price of recommendation. Uh, Nageshwar Rao is asking that I want to ask, ask home loan related question. I want to make partial prepayment. Pre 2 lakh for 10-year two, uh, reduction and 2 lakh for EMI amount reduction. Please suggest whether should I first reduce tenure or EMI amount for maximum benefit. I would say that um, the, the, both the questions are related in a way because uh, if you pay all the four, 4 lakh rupees uh, for your tenure reduction, EMI will continue and the tenure itself will be taken care of. So it means the same thing because the compounding doesn't change, you know, if the bank is honest. Uh, the sum total of this mathematics of this arithmetic is, will be the same. You can reduce the tenure, you can increase the amount. Uh, key thing to ask is that should you prepay? If, it, if, if prepayment of your loan, home loan, will give you some mental peace, if you are a little unsure about your job or you know the salary cut and you will derive some comfort, by all means do it. But if you are in a comfortable job, if you have taken this long loan th thoughtfully for a time frame, then uh, don't prepay. Home loan, normally I suggest that never borrow to invest. But home loan is the only thing which I suggest that people should carry on because it is a long term loan. Uh, the, the long term cost of the home and it also turns out to be the relatively cheaper uh, uh, lo loan or borrowing that you have. Add to it the tax incentive. And if you are go if you live in a house where you are saving on the rent, uh, then by all means, you know, it also, it only sweetens the deal that you start saving the, the rental outflow which was there, uh, which, which, which will be saved then. So I would say that uh, this is the only thing, but if it will give you peace, then either of it, it doesn't matter. Uh, just it, it, the decision entirely depends on what you are more comfortable with. If you are unsure of your sal salary being cut, then maybe, you know, reduce your EMI. Don't don't work towards uh, reducing the tenure of the loan. Uh, if you are not worried about uh, decreasing your income, then maybe decrease. Uh, you pay all of it towards reducing the tenure. Nageshwar Rao is asking that. Okay, no, that was his question. Uh, Rajarshi Bag is asking that I am subscriber to stock to Value Research Stock Advisor. I wish to invest 10 lakh in its stocks. Kindly prescribe a strategy for entering the market at different levels of Nifty 50. Uh, I don't have a formula for Nifty 50, but if you have 10 lakh rupees to invest, I think write a, for, write, write a method for yourself. And I can think of, you know, a lot of people have been asking me this. One is that limit your investment, uh, be it well diversified, Maybe a good starting point will be our best buy list of stock advisor. Uh, 
what I suggest you do is uh, invest, you know, device, uh, write, a, write a rule for yourself that you will in your 10 lakh rupees, you will invest 2 lakh rupees every month in some proportion in these 15 stocks every month for next five months. This is one set of rule. You can have another rule that uh, you will invest 50% of your stock uh, of your money, 5 lakh rupees. The day these prices are, you know, the Nifty is down 10% from current levels. Because if you keep waiting for the market to come down, you don't know. It just might go up and, and there, it, can, it can run away from there and it can happen. So I would say that 50, you know, this is, I'm just re suggesting you these rules. I, you are not supposed to, you can tweak these rules yourself. But before you start investing, write these rules for yourself. Put it on the clipboard in front of the computer. On, uh, uh, on, on uh, so, so that it's a constant reminder. The, the, another set of rule which I was mentioning you that ten per, Nifty will be down ten percent. You will invest five lakh rupees. Nifty will be down another ten percent. You will be you will put another fifty percent of the money that is left, and then you will if it is down further ten percent, then you will so you you will not be deprived of the opportunity because what happens is our thinking is malleable. When market goes down, we get scared and then we think that it will go down further. So listing these rules and following it and that being a constant reminder will and one fine morning the market will actually start going up and it will run away from there and then you will have regrets and you will be out of the market and you will not benefit from all that equities can do for you. And th these things can actually, so th I'm suggesting you two set of rules. One is the SIP rule. 10 lakh rupees uh, to be invested over the next 10 months or over the next five months depends on you know how much what your view or your skill so that is irrespective of the level of the nifty the other is level of the nifty earmark a certain part of your money and invest in there uh, so that way you will not be able to catch the bottom and it is extremely difficult i would say not only difficult it is impossible to catch the bottom of the market but uh, this is the next best thing you will be buying low and you will not have deep regret and a small part of your money will catch the bottom. And uh, then if and uh, your holding period will actually make sure that you benefit from by catching. This is a nice time to uh, money that you can you can find a great stock. You can build a great portfolio. But if you don't really sow the foundations at the right time, it will not happen. It an off season. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, they're trying to uh, harvest your, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, do, 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 see, seeding your crop will not work. So I think we are somewhere close, but not don't know exactly uh, how close or how long or how, um, you know, uh, how bad it can get. And our emotions will be very much against it. So formulate these rules, follow it. Second Chatterjee is asking that uh, please throw some light on the portfolio management service and its advantages over mutual fund. Uh, there are no advantages of portfolio management services over mutual fund, so there is no light to throw there. Uh, but uh, and I will tell you why. One is that mutual fund is a tax efficient vehicle. When you invest in a mutual fund, you uh, you are you know everything that the fund manager does. It doesn't matter to you. If you buy a mutual fund and hold it for one year, it, it becomes liable for, you know, earlier it used to be tax free. Now it is liable for short term capital gains uh, uh, for holding less than one year. Over one year, short term, long term capital gains at flat 10%. In case of PMS, all transactions will be treated as your transaction and a lot of, lot of gains. If it is a very active portfolio management service, then a lot of it could be short term. The other is that, you know, portfolio management services are subject, you know, mutual funds are subject to intense regulatory oversight, scrutiny. Mutual funds are supposed to calculate their NEVs. Everybody's investment gets pooled. Expenses can be charged and there is a, there is a formula to it. Uh, uh, disclosure standards are very different, you know, far more rigorous. Uh, so I would say that, you know, and you have plenty of options. And also I'll give you another thing, except for some, there could be some exceptions to the general statement that I'm making. There are some good portfolio management service providers. But generally speaking, if at a fund company, uh, which provides a PMS as well as a mutual fund, 
it will put its best talent for the mutual fund, not for the PMS, because mutual fund is a scalable business. You know, you it takes, you know, if you have a brilliant guy, uh, you will actually deploy him to manage that 500 crore or 1000 crore, which can also potentially become 30,000 crore fund. And there are equity funds which are 20,000, 30,000 crore fund. And uh, so you will put your best talent to running a mutual fund than a PMS if you are running both of it. Of course, there are exceptions to all the things that I'm saying. I'm generally giving you the reasonable, uh, you know, general principles that, that that is guiding my opinion on P, against PMS. And not because, you know, I'm a, we are in the business of tracking mutual funds. The other is the reporting. Uh, PMS is not supposed to talk about his performance. Uh, it is a private thing. It is something between you and him. Uh, the transparency of mutual fund, that everything that you see in mutual fund is in the public domain. The portfolio is disclosed every month. The performance is reported every night because NAVs are there. You can look at how this fund did in what context and what and why. Uh, in case of PMS, it is a secret and it is supposed to be because uh, the PMS service provider should not reveal what X investor because it's a function of which investor invested at what point in PMS, which could be a bigger driver. That apart, you know, the convenience bit, you can invest with 500 rupees in a mutual fund. The minimum in a, in a PMS is uh, now revised to 50 lakh rupees uh, from 25 lakh. So that's a big, your ability to average your investment, uh, 500 rupees every month is, is pretty cool. Uh, think of, you know, if you have to start your portfolio with 25 or 50 lakh rupees, uh, then it's a different story altogether. So I would say that you, you are not missing out on anything if you are investing in mutual fund, not a PMS. Uh, so I'm done with all the all the previous question that came to me from uh, from your postings here. And uh, now I'm going on to the the chat box where debt fund still good to invest is uh, I can't find, I can't really make up the name. Melatur Ra, Rao is asking, debt funds still, yes. Uh, choose debt funds carefully, err on the side of caution. Look at our you know, narrow list of funds to invest and go ahead. Debt funds are important now because the way interest rates have come down, the deposit rates have come down last week, this week itself. Uh, <clears throat> today is Saturday, sometime on Monday on Tuesday, or Tuesday, I came across a news item that uh, some of the fixed deposit rates are lower than the savings bank account rate. So I really wonder why one should make a deposit, but uh, these are the, this is the shape of things to come. So, uh, and uh, debt funds do enhance your return. And for the risk averse investors, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Tarun Patek is asking that, is it fine to have two, three different funds for different long term? Yes, absolutely. You can, there could be different funds for different goals depending on the time frame. Uh, okay, I couldn't really make out the question. SJ is asking idea. I don't know what idea. Uh, <clears throat> Sir, why are SBI index ETF have deviation compared to benchmark? Oh, uh, some files, sometimes, you know, these funds are unable to replicate the index precisely for technical reason. Uh, one is that, you know, there could be dividend adjustment or, you know, some corporate action translating into a bonus rights or something which cannot be replicated and particularly in the index ETF, the big, big thing that happened was the rights issue of Reliance, which, which would have caused some aberration because it is an entitlement to a rights issue, which amounts to investing in that fund more. And I don't know how they would have adjusted for it. So rights issue of an index heavyweight would have caused this difference. Uh, because, uh, but in ETF, they, it is, they, you know, ETFs are not supposed to have this big tracking error simply because the creation of those ETF units happens by way of, you know, the buyer of those units gives those stocks in that proportion for those units to be created. So there's absolutely no chance why, you know, because only when you buy an index fund that there will be a huge tracking error. You give the money to the fund, but the fund doesn't get that money or is unable to deploy it in real time. And index funds normally have five to 10% of cash or money in transit which can lead to all kinds of tra tracking errors. ETF by their very design should not have. But I think this, this index deviation can be attributed to the reliance rights issue. 
which had a financial worth, but I don't know how it will be adjusted in the ETF. Uh, Navneet Kumar Sharma is asking that what will happen to Franklin Fund's redemption process in this court, if this court case is continues, is this in favor of investors? No, absolutely not. Uh, if these court cases continue, some wealthy investors can actually uh, put a huge drag. But you know, there was a small good news today. I just wanted to, while initial part of the program, my phone fell on the ground. So I'll just read out this good news to you. Uh, for Franklin investors, of course, it's not directly linked to Franklin investors. Of course, I have the, the statement from Franklin funds uh, that uh, uh, yesterday there was a there was supposed you know this is this is a statement from Franklin Fund which I got a, from the sports spokesperson uh, sometime late yesterday that we have been receiving numerous queries from unit holders about the status of the writ petition filed below the before the Honorable Supreme Court against Union of India SEBI Franklin Templeton etc. We wish to confirm that the matter was dismissed as, withdra as withdrawn when it was taken up by the court today. Uh, apropos the of course this is legal language. Um, apropos the interim stay order on the unit holders meeting issued by the Honorable Gujarat High Court, Franklin Templeton has filed an appeal before the Honorable Supreme Court and the matter is sub -judice. Basically what they're saying is that they, uh, Franklin Templeton would like, uh, no, the good, let me just first give you the good news. I've given you all kind of legal, uh, legal garbage, uh, not garbage, but you know, legalese of uh, which may not be useful. Um, this good news was, uh, is uh, Nippon India has received, you remember two of the, uh, the three of the Franklin funds have exposure to Vodafone idea and Franklin India ultra short term bond fund has a sizable exposure. In fact, it was 7% of the money when the fund was even much larger. So most old investors, most investors of Franklin ultra short term bond fund will have this segregate with segregated portfolio which has only one fund, one bond, which is uh, Vodafone Ideal. And uh, the good news is about Nippon India has received the interest from Vodafone Idea segregated portion of hybrid bond fund. As per reports, we have received the interest payment from Vodafone in the segregated portfolio of hybrid bond fund. Amount will be credited to investors account directly on Monday. Uh, yes, this is another news, we, another good news for you. Uh, if you are invested in, if you have the segregated portfolio of the two funds, uh, because segregated portfolios were created before these funds were scheduled or were, have been decided to be shut down. So if the, if the fund company is able to get the money from Vodafone Idea, it will not be subject to all the things, all the legal crisis that is going on. You will get your money despite this, because, it, because uh, you are away from that. All the investors who have the units or uh, units of the segregated portfolio, they will get their money if the fund company is able to realize that money, uh, irrespective of the legal direction these court cases will take. Yes, it is unfortunate and I think small investors who need the money, uh, they would have started getting some part of their money. Uh, some big investors who would like to, and you know, I, my sense is that uh, uh, the investigation can go on. But money should not stop because many of these funds are of, are of the kind where investors did put their short term or medium term money and that money will get stuck. Uh, I don't want to get into the complexity of why people are becoming litigant. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, something which crosses my mind is pretty simple. Uh, these funds were sold very aggressively because they were very rewarding. They were very rewarding and they were also easy to sell because these funds were also generating higher returns. So something which was easy to sell and something which was rewarding for the intermediaries, suddenly has something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong and you need somebody to point your fingers. And, uh, easy, and uh, big investors, they might have the patience, they might have, they may not have the urgency to get the money. But small guys will actually get, will be at the mercy of the big guy's action legal action. So I would say that uh, court should take a take a view that there should be investigation. Franklin should be investigated. If there is any malafide, they should be, uh, they should not only be uh, investigated, if they are found wrong, they should be penalized. But investors should start getting their money, uh, irrespective of whatever happens. Because if I get 80% of my money, because in this case, 
justice delayed will be justice denied and legal process have a great track record to make sure that it is denied so that's my sense uh, <clears throat> and that is very unfortunate uh, i have lump sum that i Digant Patil is asking that I have lump sum that I want to invest in mutual fund in a staggered manner. Should I make it with regular interval or should I make it make use of the current market condition and look for opportunity? Don't look for opportunity. Get started with a defined thing. And uh, if you are a first time investor, start with a conservative vehicle. All that we say that we are brave or we are looking at opportunity because somebody who invested in, you know, funds and they shall see it go down by 5% further more or 10% more uh, it you know we are right only with hindsight when it comes to looking at the future very different very difficult and once you have invested your money it could be very painful so getting started start conservatively and uh, get going a lot of questions here about the but I think I have dealt with a lot of these questions in some other form, you know, in the context of the previous question. For example, Navneet Kumar Sharma is asking that what will happen to Franklin Fund's redemption process if the court continues in, is this in the favor of, okay, so I answered it. Uh, is it a good idea to of having 65% in fixed income and 35% in equity? Uh, I think we can expect 12% compounding with minimum downside or volatility. I don't know if you'll get 12% compounding with the, um, um, or not but you know it should certainly will be with far greater stability and and don't get fixated on 12 percent or 15 percent or 18 percent or 9 percent because it will be decent return in relation to what you know if inflation is low and uh, interest rates are low even 10 percent return or 9 percent return can sometimes look very handsome uh, Aruna Singh is asking that should I invest in Motilal Oswal Nasdaq 100 fund or Motilal Nasdaq 100 FOF for simplicity, go for the fund of fund. Uh, if you are a stock investor too, and you can look at the uh, your stock broker offers the ETF, and because one you have one more thing to worry about, uh, you can't do a, a SIP in a, a with simplicity in an ETF. And when you buy an ETF, um, it does not sell at NAV. There could be a small premium or discount. And in and Nasdaq 100 ETF had a very bad track record. Of this premium discount trend, uh, maybe it has it has improved a little bit, but it's still very weird. Sometimes the funds are available at you know 10% uh, premium or discount, so <clears throat> that is something to worry. Uh, but so will be Nasdaq 100 F FOF because the underlying remains the ETF. But uh, for the convenience that you get of a SIP, if it's a small amount of money, go for the FOF. Uh, Harsh is asking that for the value research mobile app coming, uh, we are testing it internally uh, and we are not very happy. So that's why this whole, we have been postponing it all, the, all this while, but we will launch it for our select users, you know, all the loyal users of value research online anyway, uh, in about two to three weeks time. Is it so? <clears throat> so uh, now I'm just jumping on large number of questions and going at the bottom and a lot of our users are okay chat no point asking here he has a pre-selected questions okay yeah that's right but you know these selection these questions are uh, were your questions we did not make them up uh, okay i'm now taking the last the end question question which is you know please share your views on parag parik long-term equity fund a uh, long-term fund i like this fund and i particularly like the simplicity with which you get the uh, international exposure, particularly those five companies in the, in the US. And very recently, it, it added Microsoft in its portfolio. Uh, <clears throat> Arunab Singh is asking, saying, thank you, Dhirindra Kumar, your, <clears throat> my view on, is it good to invest in international funds, for example, China or the US market? I think US market, yes, because uh, I think US market simply because I, I believe in this diversification principle. And when you invest in any of the US domicile funds, they are global companies. The businesses are diversified. So from that point standpoint, and China, I'm not sure. It could be a great opportunity or it could be a great disaster in coming times, given the way things are shaping up post COVID-19. So <clears throat> uh, Tushar Patnaik is asking, Patak is asking that what is a good option to save money for school fee, which get due every quarter? Uh, putting your money in a liquid fund. <clears throat> 
is good enough. In these times, a lot of people are getting scared. Uh, yeah, getting scared about their liquid fund as well, but I don't think it is uh, it is that scary. Liquid funds are designed to provide you reasonable uh, stability. Uh, I don't think you should be scared of liquid funds today. The way they they are designed and the yes, there have been there have been two three exceptional mis mishaps in the in liquid funds, but I don't think and there has been a change in the regulations and the way they conduct right now. Is LIC good investment over mutual fund? Absolutely not. LIC, go to LIC for buying an insurance and the best insurance to buy is a term insurance. With a small premium, you are able to get a good cover for yourself. And insurance, you should look at it as a buying up, paying a price to buy protection for your family. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't look at it as an investment. When you mix it with, when you mix insurance and investment, you get, you don't get good, good uh, investment management or a good or a meaningful insurance either. Uh, which category of debt fund is safe to invest right now? Uh, as you recall, you know, three weeks back when I was talking about where we were in the middle of this huge fixed income crisis, I explained it and I explain it once again. Fixed income is a very important part of any investor's portfolio. And uh, we are on the side of caution. Last October, we made a selection of funds which had none of these exot you know, exciting funds. Our, uh, today, our fixed income fund universe includes only equity saving fund, De short duration debt funds, three of them, two equity saving fund, four short duration funds, three liquid funds and two overnight funds. These are funds which will not give you any, any crisis. Equity saving is the only category which can give you little up and down, but then you should be investing your fixed income money, money with which you want some great stability uh, or you can't take great chances. Uh, a third of the money will be invested in equity, but it has the potential of, you know, beating inflation, but marginally uh, with great stability and simplicity. So <clears throat> this is our list of, you know, fund recommendation. So among the short duration fund, I will list the fund for you. Uh, Access short term fund, HDFC short term debt fund, IDFC debt bond fund, short term plan and LNT short term bond fund. Two liquid fund, Axis liquid and HDFC liquid. Uh, no, three liquid fund and IDFC cash fund. Two overnight fund, HDFC overnight fund and ICC prudential overnight fund. So this is our narrow universe of fixed income fund, which will not give you any nasty surprise. And uh, uh, rest of the things, you might get higher return. The recommendation that I'm making or the, the, the fund that I've listed uh, they will give you lower return. They will not give you the best return, but they will also not give you any bad surprise. Uh, <clears throat> now, it's time to close. Uh, so thank you very much. Let all your questions keep coming. Uh, I wish I could answer many of them, but uh, there, and we are, we, are, uh, we are taking a lesson from all your questions, which is, uh, the popular question, like if you're asking me that is HDFC small cap fund good for more than 15 years time horizon? Uh, 15 year time horizon, small cap is a good category to have. Is HDFC small cap a good fund? If you go to our funds page at Value Search Online, you should be able to find an answer to it yourself. And I think HDFC small cap fund is a good fund. But but I think, you know, try and derive. I would I would encourage you to get the answer yourself based on facts because uh, if you look forward to me telling you all the time you will never be on your own and uh, that that is where i think i may not have i will not succeed help yourself and we will put all the variables on, and we will try and be useful to you to arrive at uh, you know good uh, thoughtful fact driven fact led uh, uh, choices and decisions yourself so thank you very much for joining me. Meet you again.